clarity, reason, common sense. Your dose of sanity in an insane world, this is radio in high resolution. And now a man who consistently stays on course, the golf course that is, your host and pro golf amateur, Pastor Kurt. Only, uh, only a pro golfer in my, uh, in my own mind. And I'm not quite sure amateur uh, uh, is in the play either. I love to play golf, but there's times that I have moments of greatness and there's times it's just horrible. But uh, we're glad you're listening to High Resolution, folks. There's a lot of people that are starting to pay attention, and that's really a wonderful thing. This uh, show is all about, uh, it's, well, first of all, it's not political. Um, but we're talking about real-time events as they're taking place and then sort of breaking them down and giving you either a biblical principle or a biblical prophecy um, to kind of show us where we are because the society is just, uh, society is constantly changing. And I think that there are teachable moments for all of us, whether you happen to be a believer. I'm a pastor, an ordained non-denominational pastor. And uh, I uh, started this show uh, to try to reach people in a, in a much different way um, than just the normal preaching and teaching that's out there uh, to give you um, a, a, a sense of where we are. I do believe that we're living in the last days. Now, how long those days are, I, I can't tell you. I wish I could. I have no idea. But I do know that from a biblical standpoint, there's so many things that are going on especially around the world and even right here at home, that there's some teachable moments for us. And I think, again, whether you're a believer or whether you're not a believer, I think even or if you're a father or a mother, grandparent, whoever it might be, we can learn from so many different people. We can learn things from our children. We can learn things from our friends and our neighbors around us. There's a lot that's out there for us to be able to get information on. Um, But when it comes to biblical information, Um, the best source for you to go to is your Bible and for you to read it yourself rather than rely on other people. I I can't imagine anything worse than somebody that has been following me and, and, um, and, and thought that they had something right when in fact they had it wrong. And so that's, that's, I want to try to give you some, some scope. And today is no different with our first topic about There's a study that just came out. It's a North Carolina study from the University of North Carolina. And the researchers there at Chapel Hill came out with a composite uh, and a study of what God actually looks like. And uh, I don't know how much press this got around uh, the nation. I picked the story up off of Drudge. And uh, for all I know, it still might be there. But uh, uh, the, the story, and I have posted the story on high resolution radio for you to go to on Facebook. Uh, so you'll have an opportunity to go see the story for yourself. But the, the idea is, is what does God look like? And the, the captive is, is that liberals and conservative have different ideas on who our, our God is. And I want to just tell you a little bit about the research and what they found. And then I want to comment to you about it and see if your your ideas may be clo- kind of close to where mine are. Uh, here was the big conclusion. The big conclusion was this that liberals and conservatives see God differently. Now, what they were able to do is they they asked 551 American Christians, both conservative and liberals, what they thought uh, what God looked like. And the whole idea, the end result was a mugshot that we've, uh, we've put up here for you so that you have a chance to see, that shows God is typically, in most people's opinion, is white, he's young, he's clean, and unlike uh, someone from a, an 80s boy band is the way they are describing this here in the story. It said that all 151 Christians involved uh, came to the study with some sort of a bias, and I believe that that's true. Liberals imagined God as a more feminine, younger, and more loving, while conservatives have a a white guy in mind who was, quote-unquote, more powerful, said the researchers. It says that these biases might have stemmed from these types, uh, the type of societies that liberals and conservatives want said the study leader who was uh, Joshua Conrad Jackson, and he was, uh, he was the one of the leaders that put this, uh, uh, put this together. He went on to say that past research has shown that conservatives 
are more motivated than liberals to live in a will a well-ordered society one that would be best regulated by the powerful by a powerful god but on the other hand he said that liberals are more motivated to live in a tolerant society which would be better regulated by a loving god and i i, I want to make some comments about that in a few minutes but uh, uh, the study also went on to found that demographics often came into play on who the image of god was so they were Basically, if you were, if you like, if you'd gone to the police department, something had happened to you, and you you were asked, can you describe what the per- person looked like that that harmed you or hurt you? Um, they would they would draw a composite. Well, that's what they did with these 551, and these are the pictures that uh, that, that were professing. Men and women, though, did believe in one thing that uh, that uh, both men and women believed that God uh, was a masculine-looking God. And one of the things that the study also found that when they were asking uh, uh, African American Christians or whether they were asking uh, uh, Oriental Christians, they thought God looked like them, and uh, and I thought that that was really a, an interesting point because God very clearly said to us in Genesis that He created us in His image, and so I've talked about this before where people will believe that uh, they can. Uh, that God has many images about him. He, he created each and every one of us, that, uh, that he, he created us in his image, and, and whether it's the same color tone or whether there's a different color tone to us, we all have characteristics inside of us that look like us. But one of the things I found humorous about the study is, is it reminded me of Moses in Exodus, the uh, 33rd chapter, where uh, Moses wanted to see God. He wanted to physically physically see his face. They wanted to be face to face. And uh, God had very clearly told him that you're not going to be able to see my face. Uh, and it starts really at, uh, verse, at verse 18. Um, and Moses said, he said, please show me your glory. He's speaking directly to God. And he's, he's, he's very close to God now. And he says, then, and, then, and then he said, being God, I will make all my goodness Pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said that he is a place, he is pla- here is a place by me, excuse me. And he shall stand on the, and you shall stand on this rock. So it shall be, while my glory passes by, I will put you into this cliff of the rock, and you, and I will, I will cover you with my hand while I pass by, and then I will take away my hand, and you shall be able to see my backside, but my face you shall not see. What what I wanted to tell you about this study was just simply this. Again, societies have different ideas on who, who God is. I believe with all of my heart that there's only one place uh, to go f- to understand who our God is, understand the characteristics of God, and to have a better understanding of who God is. And that is obviously for the Old Testament and for the New Testament, and that's where my bias comes from. And I believe that it's accurate and it's true. And if I'm wrong, I'll be apologizing to God someday. But I don't believe that I am because I believe in this Bible is the written word of God penned by Jewish hands that was Holy Spirit inspired. That is, in fact, the living, breathing word of God. And the reason why I do call it the living, breathing word of God is because you don't read it as much as it reads you. And that's why it's so important for you to go and understand. But here's the point. So you have this 551 people that comes for this study, and they all have their own ideas of who God is, and, and, and few of them were actually correct. And, and, the, and the point here is, is that we need to get back and look so we can learn about the character of God. Yes, we do serve a loving God, but the liberals maybe have taken it to such a point that they really have missed what the true character of God is. Remember what God said to Abraham. He said, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you, which means we serve a God that curses. And he says very clearly in scriptures, I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion, which means very clearly that he doesn't have compassion overall. But that's what the word of God says. 
versus what people think. I've often found that it difficult. Now, I think whether you're a Republican or whether you're a Democrat or whether you're an independent or whether you consider yourself to be a conservative or whether you consider yourself to be a liberal, I think both the majority on both sides are completely and totally lost. I will say that a conservative can be partially correct and still miss the true character of who God is, but are probably going to come closer than a liberal is. And the reason why this study was trying to show here is, is that people that are liberal have this idea that God is some sort of a kumbaya God. And there's absolutely no truth in that at all. Many people think in, from being a liberal that there's many ways that people will see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus very clearly told us uh, that, that he was the way and he was the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father but from through him. That's very exclusive. And so I, I just wanted to share this study with you. You can go on Facebook, uh, on, on my Facebook page on High Resolution Radio and check out the story for yourself and get, get, get I, was, I just was caught by some of the humor of, of this and I wanted to share it with you so that you had a chance to maybe share this with others. You know, it's summertime, folks, and, and uh, uh, as uh, we get into the full swings of summer, it, it's great to be able to get under a tree and just be able to relax a little bit and take it a little bit easier. And I found this little video of a father and son that uh, the father had come up with an ingenious way uh, to, uh, uh, to be able to play with his son and teach him how to hit the ball. And uh, I thought I would share it with you and just, uh, just know as you get a chance to see this that uh, the genius sometimes of fathers and, um, uh, and realizing just how important fathers are as we have just come off this Father's Day uh, weekend. And um, my prayer is, is that we would get back and look at, at the, the Word of God and have a, a better, clearer understanding of who he is. And, uh, and with that, I'm going to leave you, but I want you to uh, just take this story and share it. I'm going to be back soon and share some stories with you on what's happening in, uh, in Israel and what's happening in the Middle East and what's happening with our president and share some thoughts with you there. So with that, I always close with the priestly blessing. It comes from the bottom of my heart to you, and I give it to you each and every time I do one of these podcasts. And it's because I want you to know God so much more than you may know him. Now may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you, and may the Lord be gracious unto you, and may the Lord give you his peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that is amazing, a peace that once you have it, you never want to lose it. And so, Father, I pray for this blessing over them, and that I pray that you would increase their knowledge of who God is, who you are, Father, that you would reveal yourself. Give them the ears to hear, Father, and the eyes to see. I pray for this over them, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. God bless you. Uh, check us out. Go to High Resolution Radio on Facebook and highresolutionradio.com to learn more about what we're doing and become a part of what we're trying to bring to the world that I believe is more lost each and every day. God willing, we'll see you soon. Well, you've been listening to High Resolution Radio with your host, Pastor Kurt. Now that you know what he thinks, tell him what you think by dropping him a line at highresolutionradio.com or High Resolution Radio on Facebook. He values your opinion and your feedback as he teaches in a brand new way. As always, we appreciate your support of this broadcast with your financial contribution and by sharing this message with your friends. To donate now and be a part of our global online community, visit highresolutionradio.com and click on the Donate Now button. Now that you're armed with knowledge, go out and fight the good fight. And until next time, stay sane, everyone. <laughs>